good. Amen. I always have this this I always have this disillusionment in myself. I'm like, well, if I can if I get through Easter, because Easter and Lent are you know a busy time for pastors and church people. And so I'm like, well, if I can if I can just make it to Easter, maybe I'll get some rest. And you know what? Never happens. Never happens. Because because the gospel of Jesus Christ is a is an ongoing effort. It's a it's a daily thing. You will not if you're looking for rest from proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got news for you right here. It ain't happening. If you're new to church and you're just getting in, integrated into church and you really buy into it, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not it's not a wave you're riding. Right? It's a it's a life. It's a lifestyle. It it is everything. It, and it should be. Um, it should be. And once you dedicate your life, once you accept the free gift of grace, that work that was done on the cross, this is the life you lead. Amen? We can be in agreement on that. And so, there's always somebody to testify to. There's always somebody to uh, show compassion to. There's always someone to show the love of Christ to. Because, because Jesus is gone. And He left this to us. And so if it's not done, we don't have anybody to blame but ourselves. Amen? So I'm going to read you. I want to, I want to build a little foundation here. We're going to... Does anybody know what day is the next big day we're shooting for? Pentecost. Amen. Uh, many people say it's the birth of the church. I was in a class. A guy had a PhD in liturgical studies. He corrected us. He said it is not the birth of the church. Um, I'll take him for his word, but we're going to celebrate it as the birth of the church on Pentecost. Okay, All right, so that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> so I'm going to read um, in the 20th chapter of the, the Gospel of John. And uh, if you have your Bibles, you can open to that. I'll read out of the NRSV, and that's what your pew Bibles are as well. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. They were already being persecuted. Amen? Jesus came and stood among them and said, how did Jesus get into that room with locked doors? And He said, peace be with you. And after He said this, He showed them His hands and His side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Okay? As He sent me, so I send you. I've, Jesus is saying, I did the first leg of the, of the mission, and now it's yours. Now it's yours. When He has said this, He breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Do you know what that is? That's authority. Right? He just gave them authority. The church has a lot of authority as far as God is concerned. He transferred that. That's what Jesus said. First off, you receive the Holy Spirit and then I'm giving you the authority to bind things. And sometimes in today's culture, it seems like the church is just kind of timid that doesn't want to exercise their authority. And I'm not talking about domination. I'm not talking about false doctrine or anything like that. But the authority to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? We have been given that. It is we are in possession of it as the body of Christ, as the church. But sometimes we don't exercise it and I don't know why we don't, but if you are in the body of Christ, what He's saying is once you receive the, the baptism and receive the Holy Spirit, the mission is yours and the authority to prosper, to make it prosper, is upon you. It rests upon you. We're in agreement on that, right? But Thomas, we're gonna. This is a this is on the lectionary, so we always kick Thomas around about this time every year. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. 
So the other disciples told him. And then he, they said, we have seen the Lord. Say that with me. We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. Is that true unbelief? Uh, I don't think so. We kicked Thomas on that. But he's, uh, he's saying that because he hasn't seen what they've seen. He hasn't had the discussions that they, they discussed. So what precedence is this saying? What, what precedence is this giving us? Because Thomas has heard something, hasn't he? He has heard something. He just hasn't believed the hearing. And a week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, I guess we can conclude you can't lock Jesus out. Amen? Amen. If he wants to come in this building, He's coming. And stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then He said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see My hands, and reach out your hand and put it in My side. Do, no, do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said, Have you believed because you have seen Me? Blessed are those who have not seen yet have come to believe. The Gospel of John. What precedence does that say? What does that say going forward? It, it means what it's saying is, what I'm, I think it's saying is that from this point on, the Gospel of Jesus Christ is going to be spoken, right? It's going to be spoken. I've never had the opportunity. Jesus has never come to me and said just... Just touch, Gary. Just touch. See the side. He's never, he's never done that to me. I have had experiences. I've had experiences of the Holy Spirit in communion and, and other aspects that I know the Lord is real. You can't convince me He's not. But the, but the main avenue of spreading the Gospel is the Word. Amen? It is the Word and the authority of the, the authority that they're talking about that I'm talking about is the, the authority to make the proclamation. I have the authority to stand in this pulpit and say, Jesus Christ is Lord. I have that authority because I'm a child of God. It's not because the robe's on. It's not because I'm the pastor. It's because it's true and I, am a, I have received the gift of salvation from Jesus Christ through, through, through Jesus Christ. Amen. I received that. I am forgiven. I am in the body of Christ. I'm redeemed. I am a child of God. I am a full heir. And therefore, I have the authority and I'm, I have the obligation to speak the gospel of Jesus Christ because Jesus is God. That responsibility has fallen to me and to you. If you're in the baptized, believing body of Christ, the speaking of the gospel and the transference of the gospel and the message of salvation relies on you and I. Say, I agree with you, Gary. I agree with you, Gary. We're all in agreement. We'll move on. What a huge responsibility. Let me ask you something. If you had, if you had known humanity from the beginning like God knows humanity, and you saved the world, right? Reconciled the world and all of creation, not just us. Jesus Christ reconciled all of creation back to Him. Who would you leave it to? Not me. I can guarantee you that. I, I guarantee you, not, God wouldn't be sitting up there and I think I'm going to put, give Gary all this authority and all this responsibility. I'm surprised He, he gave it to us. Right? And Jesus just had a very short ministry. Yet he left, he sat down, somebody's got to stand up. Who is it? It's you. It's the body of Christ. And so if you want to turn to Acts, the fifth chapter, 17th verse. If you're going there, say amen when you get there. Amen. Then the high priest took action. And all who were with him, that is, the sect of the Sadducees, being filled with jealousy. What are they so jealous about? Huh? Authority? That Their authority may be um, 
infringed upon? They arrested, filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors, brought them out and said, Go, stand in the temple and tell the people, say that, and tell the people the whole message about this life. Amen? This is a mandate. These are the first church. These are just a short time after Jesus Christ has been resurrected. And tell them about this life. When they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and went on with their teaching. How many of you, how many of you are in positions every day? I'm as guilty as you are, but see opportunities to share the love of Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ and just too timid to do it. Just don't want to step out there. Well, I got news for you. You live in the great US of A, you're not going to be locked up for it. You might get kicked off Facebook for a week or two, but I'm going to tell you, that is not suffering. I'm just here to tell you, that's not suffering. People around the world are suffering for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We ain't one of them, I'm telling you that. We preach and go about as we leave. You know, the the great thing is we got the choice to either go or not go to church. And with that freedom, what do we do? We don't go to church. Somebody, somebody, I, I saw something that I got an email that said this person is going to do this, going to cost you, uh, if you want to provide this service, it's going to cost you 300 bucks. Some people will go, well, why is he charging 300 bucks? Guy's a minister. I thought, well, I know what happened. He offered this service to all the pastors, and nobody, either people abused it or they, or they just didn't utilize it. And the reason is, is because if you don't pay for something, you don't think it's worth anything. Right? If you don't suffer to come to church, if you don't have to sacrifice to come to church, you just figure it ain't worth anything. Amen? I'm preaching to somebody. Go stand in the temple and tell the people the whole message about this life. What life? His life. This life. When they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and went on with their teaching. When the high priest and those with him arrived, they called together the council and the whole body of elders of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the temple police went there, they did not find them in the prison. So they returned and reported, We found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. He can walk in. He can take out. Amen? Through locked doors. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these words, They were perplexed about them, wondering what might be going on. I know what's going on. Then someone arrived and announced, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the temple police and brought them, but without violence, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The movement's already started. Amen? And then it goes on and says, and Peter says, like, you know, I've, I'm mandated by God to preach this gospel. You can try and stop me, but it's not going to stop because I, I answer to a higher authority, right? I didn't see you. You put me in jail, but I didn't see you get me out of jail through locked doors, right? I haven't seen you show up in a room and uh, walk through a door and then ask for a piece of fish. And then we go down to... Uh, 40, they were convinced by him, and then when they called the apostles, they had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. As they left the council, they rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer the dishonor for the sake of the name. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach or proclaim Jesus as the Messiah. Amen? Amen. I thought it was an honor to be able to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. When are we going to reclaim that? Right? Just the honor to be able to tell somebody. You live in a free country. There's people right now in, in, in Iran, in China, North Korea, don't have the opportunity to do that without going to jail, but yet they're whispering the gospel of Jesus Christ to everybody they can. They're smuggling in Bibles. There's, and here we are. We can speak freely. We can say anything we want. And yet we don't, we're very reluctant to proclaim the greatest news in humanity. 
We're in possession of it. It's been given to us. It's our obligation. When you took and t- took the free gift of grace, there was a this was transactional. I've told you this before. This was transactional. There, you were redeemed. God will redeem you any any time in any condition. But this was transactional. He expects a return. The blood that that was spilled. Can we honor it? Is it too much to ask to honor the blood that was spilt on the cross? I don't think so. I don't think so. He handed it over. He handed humanity to us. And the question is, what, what, what have we done with it? What have I done with it? I told you I sat in that Seder mill with people who were not raised in the Christian faith. They were raised in many other faiths. They made a decision late in life and with, a, and with a lot of loss of family members and things like that, people who were going to ostracize, ostracize them. And they, they, and they chose to follow Jesus Christ. And they can't wait to tell everyone about what has happened to them. They believe that this is the way, that this is the one true God. And they want everyone to know. I want everyone to go know. And that's why after Easter, I don't get any rest. Because not everyone knows. People want to speculate on when the end times are going to come. When we get busy and tell everybody about Jesus Christ. You know that's a condition of the second return, right? Second advent is conditional on what we do. So the question for you today is, we're going towards Pentecost. The church is established. The church is commissioned. You and I are saved. What are we going to do about it? Rhonda? Let me pray for us. Gracious Lord and Holy Father, I thank You first for the privilege to stand here. I thank You for the Word. I thank You for Scripture. Um, I thank You for this, this building and this community. Heavenly Father, there's work to do here. There's work to do in this community, in our families, in our workplaces, our businesses, and everywhere we go. So as Jesus said when He was 12 years old, when He was lost in the temple, He said, didn't you know I'd be about my Father's business? So Lord, let us get about Your business. You've empowered us. You've equipped us. You've given us authority. Let us step into it and be bold in our proclamations and fervent in our mission. In the name of our Lord Christ Jesus, the church says, Amen. Amen. The altar's always open. If you need prayer, uh, you want to recommit your life, rededicate your life, today is the day. Don't walk out of here leaving leaving something so important uh, unfinished. Amen? Amen. And while you're turning, you might want to just hold your finger on 348 and we'll see how that works. We're going to roll today. Stand as you are able.
Amen. This is a thought I want you to leave you with. <clears throat> this book tells me everything I need to know about my faith in Jesus Christ and my, my eternity, what's going to be in eternity. This book tells me how Jesus spent his life, and most importantly, we just went through how Jesus spent the last three days of his life. Amen? So my question to you today is, what kind of book are you writing? What are the, what are the days of your life going to look like? If people wrote them down and chronicled your life, from this point forward, because you've heard a message, you understand, once you proclaim and we say, let's say this, anybody in agreement, what I've said today, if you're in agreement, say amen. 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 Do you know what you just did? You just obligated yourself. Amen? amen. No, you did. I'm not, not God, that's the way God operates, okay? It's the way Jesus operates. He's coming back to make decisions on all of us. That's what the Bible says. He comes back and to judge the quick and the dead. But you want Jesus to do that because you don't want me to do it because I'm not qualified to do it because I'm prejudiced about things. But when he comes back, what's the book? What's your book going to say? From this point forward, knowing what you know, what you heard today, what is your life, if somebody wrote it and chronicled it, what's it going to say? Because it will be read. Amen? And it will be read in a much higher court than this. Amen? Let me pray for us. Gracious Lord and Holy Father, bless this congregation as they leave here, as they've heard the word. Let them change, not let them change their lives. Let your Holy Spirit change their lives because you can do what we can't. So we surrender our lives to you, Lord. We say, come in, full invitation. We receive your grace and your mercy. And from here forward, we're on your team and we're going to pro proudly proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the church says, Amen.